Car enthusiasts from Melbourne will probably know this building quite well. It's the Fox Classic Car Collection, housed in the Queen's Warehouse, an old mint and customs house. But if you're not from Australia, Lindsay Fox, the guy who founded this place, he started out in Melbourne in the 1950s with one truck, built up a massive empire, and he's a total car nut. He's got some of his finest cars inside, and there's some new stuff to see. If you thought you knew the Fox car collection, keep watching because you're gonna see something you have never seen before. The collection has been shuttered for the past couple of years while some major building works adjacent to the warehouse were planned. The old building's had a bit of a wash and brush up and is now reopening with extended opening hours. So come with me and uh, we'll ease you in quite gently here. This is Australian racing royalty, the Nissan Skyline R32 GTR, Scaife and Richards car. This GTR is the very same one that competed in Bathurst at 1992, ending up a little bit bent on that soaking wet October afternoon. It's been painstakingly restored since then and remains in running order. The Gibson Motorsport GTRs were so good that not only did they defeat all comers on the track, they effectively killed Group A racing in Australia altogether. So, in a strange way, we have this Japanese Aussie hybrid to thank for what we now know as the Supercars Championship. If you prefer something a little more air-cooled, we've got two Beetles here. This one has 67 kilometers on the clock from new. This one, 227. And here is a genuine unicorn. It's the 168 kilowatt Mercedes A38. And I should imagine that this is the only vehicle in the whole car collection with two engines. It's got one at the front, one at the back. They made, I believe, four of these cars. Two were given to Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard. One was bent irreparably at the ring. Um, and there's this one. So it, it's a super rare thing and very, very nice. Over here, I love this thing. It's an Austin A90 Atlantic and it's of particular relevance to Lindsay Fox because this was the car that his dad drove. This was the first car that he remembers and it has been given an absolutely painstaking restoration. It's, it's better than new. It's got a whole Connolly Hyde interior and the paintwork is deep and lustrous. I can guarantee that this thing is better now than when it ever came out of the factory. Right, let's go through and have a look at some of the rest of it. Okay, here's a bit of an underdog. I love this car. It is the Rolls-Royce Camargue. Some people think it's ugly. It's a two-door Rolls-Royce. Um, I remember when I was a kid, nine years old, this was the most expensive car you could buy in the UK. The list started out in What Car Magazine, 1,640 quid for a Fiat 126. And up at the top, 83,122 was the Camargue. It was designed by Paolo Martin, the same guy who did the Lancia Beta Monte Carlo and the Ferrari Modulo Fiat 130. And I quite like it. Um, some people are not down with the lines, but I think it's a pretty cool thing. Silver Dawn. This was found in a barn in New Zealand, this Jaguar SS100. It was originally steel bodied and they've rebodied it in aluminium. XK120, a couple of genuine buttes, 300 SL Roadster and the iconic Gullwing. And this beast, um, Mercedes 540K. This uh, has a bit of a dark history. This one came over to the UK. It was an ambassador's car and Goering traveled in that and there's speculation that Hitler has also traveled in that car. Um, far more savory characters have traveled in this car, this Austin Healey 100S. Um, if you look on the dash in here, this is a car that was raced not only by Jack Brabham, Sir Jack, I should say, but also Sterling Moss. What a little honey. Okay, come through here with me. It all gets a bit porno through here. It's the supercars. Um, we'll kick off here with the Jaguar XJR15 from 1990. This was Peter Stevens getting his eye in before the McLaren F1. First carbon fiber road car, and it got the six liter V12 in the back. Apparently quite a tricky thing to drive. Never had the privilege. Um, but that was a prelude to this car that is rather better known, the XJ220. Um, the thing I love about this car is it sets a Nürburgring lap record, a 746 back in 1991, driven by John Nielsen. Um, Nissan 
subsequently came out with the R33 GTR that did a 759, made a huge fuss of all the marketing, and then Jaguar said, hang on a second, five years ago we uh, beat that record quite comfortably. Um, this one's got the six cylinder engine from the Metro 6R4, development of that engine in it. Um, such a cool thing. As is this, uh, a rare bird indeed. Mercedes SLR GT, from the trophy series. I didn't build too many of these. Um, it was a bit of a, a bit of a play thing, but it's, it's absolutely lovely. 500 kilowatts worth. Um, I believe Lindsay Fox has three of these. Um, it rotates the cars in and out of the museum to keep the, keep the displays fresh for people. Um, this is a personal favorite of mine. Lexus LFA, maybe one of the best sounding cars ever produced. That one has less than 200 Ks on it from new. So that is box fresh. It's still got the plastic on the seats. Mercedes SLR Sterling Moss. Well, it's just crazy. If you prefer retro, 2005 Ford GT. That's got uh, delivery mileage on it, as has this thing. It's the new 2020 six-cylinder Ford GT, and it's just such an extreme shape. Uh, nobody's seen this car here yet. Um, that came in under wraps. Ferrari Enzo uh, in <laughs> Lin Fox colors, not McDonald's. That is a Lin Fox color, uh, ordered from factory with the yellow roof. But uh, that hasn't done a great deal of clicks either. And a car, I'm gonna climb over here. A car that many of you will recognize, um, Ferrari F40. Uh, has the submerged duct ever been done better than on this car? It's, uh, it's still the car that a lot of people see as the definitive supercar. And uh, you can kind of see why, can't you? It's, uh, it's beautiful and age has been very kind to this car. But while these are undoubtedly some spectacular vehicles, you might have noticed the lack of one particular manufacturer. Um, so come with me now and I'll show you something very, very special. We have a bunch of new Porsches at the Fox Car Collection. Um, these are part of it. 918 Spyder and the new 935. You'll have noticed that they're both finished in sapphire blue. I'll tell you a bit more about that. The Sapphire Collection was bought directly from the Porsche family. More specifically, Gregor Pieck, the son of ex-VW boss, the late Ferdinand Pieck, and the great-grandson of Ferdinand Porsche. For Gregor's 19th birthday, he got a Breitling Le Mans watch with a blue leather strap, and the germ of an idea was born. It reminded him of the scarab blue development version of the original 911R, his father had worked on back in 1967. So, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of that car, Gregor commissioned a series of special Porsches, all painted in sapphire blue with British racing green detail stripes, a tribute to his father's acquisition of Bentley for the VW brand. And they all feature black watch tartan interiors. Gregor learnt to drive in a Skoda Citigo, but by the time of his 23rd birthday, he'd graduated to something a little bit more serious. This Porsche 911R, to be exact, and this was the car that kicked off the whole collection. It's the most valuable 991, probably, and Gregor clearly had a thing about Porsche 991s. Here's a Speedster, that's a very desirable car. And here's the car that um, many people thought that Porsche introduced to novel speculators who'd bought 911Rs. It's the 911 GT3 with Touring Pack. We also have here a very nice 911 Targa 4 GTS. Um, but he didn't stop there, he got quite excited. So let's go through and have a look at the rest of the stuff. Just to keep you on your toes, Gregor also commissioned a sapphire blue Porsche 918 Spyder. And also this, uh, 935 flat nose. This one is absolutely stunning. It's on its delivery wheels, but it's got all of the parts inside it. The Fox Car Collection actually has three of these. They're pretty special cars. Gregor also commissioned a 911 Turbo S exclusive series. This one is the coupe. Not content with that, he also had a cabriolet with um, the stripes over the roof. And it wouldn't be complete without a GT2 RS and a GT3 RS. And just to keep you entertained, here's a couple of 935s. 
we've got a black one, and this one just looks like something from another planet in naked carbon. Would you look at that? Okay, we've got to sweep here through a few more historic Porsches. Here is a little bastard, 550, um, 718 RSK, very, very rare Porsche. This is the only car in the um, collection that doesn't actually run, doesn't have an engine, that's being uh, reconditioned at the moment. 356, 356C, another 356C. 911 Targa, these were, these were unloved for a long time, but uh, they're now getting quite in demand. And this is a rare and special car. This car competed on Dakar. Um, it wasn't actually competitive, it completed the whole course. It's a four-wheel drive car, and this car was in many ways the precursor of what was to come next, which is the 959. Um, this one graced many a bedroom wall in the 1980s, um, as did the 928. This was a European car of the year, the Porsche 928. This is a later model. This is the GT. And this is a rare one too, uh, 911 Speedster. Most of these cars were wide-bodied cars. This is one of the very rare narrow-bodied cars. 911 C4, and finally, a 2020 991 Speedster. So it's uh, quite a sweep of Porsches, I think you'll agree. It's hard to know what to make of the Sapphire collection. It's undoubtedly spectacular and a little head-scratching. But it's good that Fox has been able to avoid the cars being sold separately. They're well worth seeing, and visiting a museum is now easier than ever. Picking a favourite? Well, that's a whole lot trickier.